Hey guys, welcome to our first YouTube video. Welcome to our channel. My name is Fabian and on my side here is Ryan aka Fitz. And hey. this is going to be our first YouTube video for our five card channel here. We are both coaches at the five card Peter mastermind and with the black Friday sale uh, coming up, we thought it's a nice idea to start a little YouTube series where we will review some hands that we played and yeah, we're going to jump right into the action here with a hand that I played on 2550 on GG poker. And yeah, let's just get right into it. I would say I pick up ace queen 864 double suited on the cutoff and we already have the first decision to make here. So we have a strong player open raising from middle position. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts here? Um, preflop, like what would you do here? Like, I think we have like, all three options basically like we could three bet we could call we could raise uh, we could fold uh one thing to consider here is for sure this the the short stack that we have behind on the button who could squeeze quite aggressively if we were to call but how how would you approach this situation ryan yeah i think it's always good to be aware of the stack sizes behind you because that's going to play a big part in um, our strategy and we're going to deviate a lot so for here for instance with the short stack behind us the problem we're going to run into is that if we do call um, and our opponent in the button squeezes we're going to um, there's basically going to be a lot of parts of the game tree that we sort of have a few difficult decisions to make and on top of that if you like short stack on gg man like you just like you just like a cuck for gg paying all their rake i don't know why they, why, why you do it but um do, do you do you man that's that's cool but um <laughs> anyway that's what i have to say about short stackers but obviously that's something to consider here and given that our hands can elect to call or three bet we could also fold um i think i would certainly lean to either three betting or folding just because the player behind us is uh going to uh, potentially squeeze us if we do call and that's quite problematic yeah i i in game i decided to three bet here um, I looked it up afterwards and it looks like if everybody had a hundred uh, big blinds here, this would be a, a call, but also like very marginal call. We could also three bet this, like the three bet is, um, slightly losing, but I think it's still playable here in, in this spot. Um, yeah, but I think in hindsight, I think we should have just folded, especially with the short stack behind and just, uh, uh, play the next hand, but we decided to three bet here and... The bad news is coming right away. We get four bet here. Um, yeah, we have an ace in our hand, but uh, I don't think we should consider folding here with this type of hand. Or do you uh, disagree here? No. Um, generally speaking, uh, we don't do a lot of folding here. And um, if we have an uh, a double suited hand with the nut suit in it as well, we really don't uh, fold much at all. If if any, so um, we're definitely continuing here. Yeah, and that's also what I did. Um, flop decision is maybe also a little bit interesting. So my decide my opponent decides to tank, and then jam. Uh, oh, you can already see I basically didn't uh, take much time to call here. It might seem a little bit marginal, um, but we, after all, the SPR is very small. We have a pair with a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. Um, and I think we need to put the money in here. Having one club in our hand also helps us um, to reduce basically the frequency that our opponent will have a flush draw. Like that's that will like the only be really bad news for us would be like if our opponent had a nut flush draw here, for example. Or I mean, I guess he could have also flopped like a ace ace seven eight like a straight. But overall, we should do quite well here, especially when we're not up against a flush draw. And as you can see, here is also just jamming like any overpair it seems like what do you think about his jam like not having any club or a diamond in his hand um do you think it's still standard or um would I you actually, consider something else yeah i, I don't i don't think it's uh i don't think it's going to be a stack off here i feel like it should be a hand that checks um there's definitely going to be some checking from his range on this board texture because if you, if you think about the hands that uh, are in our range, we interact a lot better here. 
and that, and because he doesn't have a flush draw, a backdoor flush draw, or a flush draw blocker, like he can be pretty much dead on um, a lot of uh, if, if we out rock up with a lot of different hands. We have a straight, we have a set, um, which can be somewhat frequent. And on top of that, he do he does have queen jack in his hands, um, which uh, is going to block hands that he kind of wants us to have. Like if we have a hand that's like uh, king queen jack ten nine, for instance. Um, those kinds of things. So I don't actually think his hand, given it has like no board interaction, should bet here. Yeah, I think this is also like one of the the small differences between four and five card pillow. I think in four card pillow, when a board comes down like this, you're still like supposed to just uh, jam all the overpairs um, at this SPR because like your opponent doesn't have um, a good hand often enough. But here in five card pillow, especially because since based on the hands or the the cards that you know already, like you know five cards, and when you block nothing of the board, it makes it even more likely that your opponent has something. So I think you need to be somewhat careful here. I'm actually not sure. I would guess like this is like one of the few hands that could maybe check. And then I think when he had, but I, th I think as soon as he has like one club in his hand, it might be okay okay already it might not like if you're new to the game it might not seem like a big difference okay what does it matter like a club doesn't give him an additional flush draw but it actually it reduces the frequency that the in position player can have a flush draw and a flush draw you can actually consider as a value hand like a flush draw is like any hand that has a flush draw here is probably quite strong it has like a pair with a flush draw and maybe even a gut shot and that has a lot of equity against his hand basically but yeah we get it in and i not sure if I run it twice here. I'm asking. And he says, let's do it and let's see what happens here. We turn two pair and win the first one. And then we turn the straight on the second one. And we are running so pure here. And we take it down. Yeah, I think any anything you want to add regarding the sand or I think we've we covered the most important things here. Yeah, pretty much. I think like it's also worth saying like you're flipping with a hand that's like you're sort of unsure about or it's not unsure about but it's like it's not a great call down for you and that kind of speaks to how like weak his hand is uh, in this particular spot yeah so. and that's also yeah the, this says a lot right my hand is like kind of marginal here on the flop but i'm still ahead against his is against his particular hand even um and that's although he's like um even blocking a queen so um so he's blocking one of my outs but i guess he's always blocking something or very often um yeah i have one more hand here like so in the next hand um we have not a similar spot but at least a three bet as well um the player on the button who's also a strong regular decides to open race and i pick up ace king king eight four double suited in the big blind um with 60 big blinds and i decide to three bet this um anything anything to mention about the three bet you think it's a little bit light one one thing i can say that in five card pillow compared to four card pillow ace king the the hand ace king king definitely loses in value it's not as strong as in four card pillow like you have to be more careful with the three bets and um um in general with the v pips but i think this hand being double suited and Especially when we're a little bit shorter, I think like the three bet is still still good here. What do you think? Yeah, a hundred percent. It's it's still going to be fine. Like we're sitting shorter. We also have the uh, ante in play. Although I don't think on GG you can raise to the. You can't, it doesn't get included, does it? Uh, but it's still going to affect the stack to pot ratio as well, which is obviously advantageous for our um, range once we three bet, especially a hand like this. And yeah, again. Um, you often won't see too many single suited hands like ace king king three bet um, unless they are really connected obviously in this case we're double suited so that's not going to be too much of a problem yep um so i three bet my opponent makes the call and we're going to see a flop of uh, queen seven uh, queen seven three rainbow and now we have a decision to make. So uh, we don't have a pair blocker. We have two backdoor flush draws. So what do you think about this? Uh, is it just a, as standard as it gets, like just pot it and we're done with it? Or are there any other options uh, 
possible here for us? Um, I think given that the stack to pot ratio is so short, um, we can certainly shove this hand. If we were at 100 big blinds, um, I don't think that would be the case. Generally speaking, um, what the solver likes to do um, when it does pot a hand like this is have a little bit more backup. So maybe um, a pair blocker for instance here or some kind of like straight draw. Um, but if we don't have those hands, we generally speaking check just because we don't have enough equity to stack off with here. But generally speaking, in a spot like this, we want to be using a large sizing because we want to basically leverage the fact that our aces and kings have a lot of equity here and that makes up a majority of our range. And our hand certainly fits in um, to that sort of uh, hand class in terms of potting. Oh yeah, and so since the SPR is so low, it doesn't matter so much um, that we don't have a pair blocker here. And I mean, we still have two backdoor flush draws to to uh, to rely on in case uh, our opponent shows up with a strong hand. But opponent, unfortunately, doesn't fold the flop. I mean, for us, it's basically the best result if our opponent folds the flop here. Like, we are very happy just taking down the pot with uh, such a marginal hand. Um, but my opponent makes the call. And we see that seven of clubs on the turn. And I mean, it's not the greatest hand because our opponent can have some hands like a seven with a gut shot calling the flop, seven, six, five or whatever. Um, some of these hands maybe are even jamming, but he could also just have like a seven even without a straight draw, I think, calling here. Um, so yeah, I think with this little money behind, I think we have no other op option to just uh, than just going all in and basically pray that he doesn't have a seven. Um, or do you think there's anything else we should do? Um, no, I think that makes sense again at this SPR. We kind of put him in a tough spot with um, a hand like a bear queen, for instance, at this point. Um, at a higher SPR, it would certainly be a different story. Um, especially because the card that pairs is the middle card. It's not the bottom pairing card, which would be a lot less relevant to our opponent's calling range. Um, so definitely something to consider there. And ev just because the board card pairs as well in this instance, it does make a difference um, what the card is. So if the top pairing card pairs on a board texture like this after we pot, it's gonna, our strategy is going to play quite a bit differently to say if the three um, pairs, especially uh if the the stack to pot was larger yeah that's what i was asking do you think like uh you're probably uh mainly talking about 100 big plans i think even yeah. if it's like for this stack to pot ratio like even if it's a queen i'm not loving it but i like as i said our opponent can also call the flop with a three or with a seven uh maybe he has a hand like six four five without a pair sometimes or whatever so even if the top pairing card or if the turn would pair the top card i think i would still just go all in with my hand here given the there's so much money in the pot already and i have so little behind yeah sorry i was i was more sort of talking about 100 big blind strategy but yeah given given we're so short it makes sense to just shut our hand okay um and let's see what happens here i decide to go all in for one thousand three hundred dollars my opponent makes the quick fold and we actually see that we would have hit a nice full house on the river okay that's that was it for the first uh, video here on this channel uh, make sure to check out the the black friday sale for the five card pillow mastermind it's gonna have a 300 dollars discount i believe and there will be more videos like this coming in the future on this channel but also some other formats we will try out what what works best for us what but we're also happy to listen to your feedback what would you like to see on this channel and yeah anything you want to add ryan no, I think that's it. Just let us know uh, what you'd like to see, and we'll certainly uh, keep that in mind when we make future videos. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Peace. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Let us know what you thought and what you would like to see in the future. And if you're after sort of any more coaching content or any ways to improve your five-card PLO game, we are both coach in the PLO Masterminds where there's training software and coaching videos released frequently for you guys to uh, improve your game. And if that's something you would be interested in, I'll put some links in the description. We are also running a Black Friday special where you can get 
a 20% discount on a yearly membership. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.